The reviews for Metroid Prime are insane. Naturally, with Metroid Prime Remastered coming out to Switch, I decided to finally cave and play it. With no nostalgia attached to it, I really wanted to know. Is it that good? It's getting review scores of 90 plus pretty much everywhere, with people calling it a classic that transcends time. Turning the 2D Metroid games into a 3D is a daunting task. Up until this point, these games were developed with a 2D plane specifically in mind. It nails it pretty hard, with only a few hiccups for me. The basic gameplay is running around the map, solving puzzles, killing enemies in your path, and figuring out where to go next. Especially on the first playthrough, it's gonna be pretty common to go to a place and say, oh, I need a new power-up so I can get up there. It's always exciting at getting a new power-up and realizing all the new places that you can go. For example, the space jump boots will allow Sam to do a dull jump. There are so many jumps that you'll be off by just a hair, and that was intended. It's cool to go back and be able to finally get up that damn ledge. Other power-ups that give that effect are different types of shots because they all open different doors, the gravity suit, which allows Samus to move freely in water, and the spider ball, which will enable Samus to magnetize to rails. The levels are all distinct, and they are fun to explore for a good while. For example, the Fendrana Drifts is a snow-like place that has ice enemies wandering around, as well as a lab. The Magmar Caverns is a lava-filled hellhole that have fire snake things come out of the lava and attack you. The Talon Overworld is a nice lush jungle location that will also lead to a completely submerged building. The Fans on Mines is filled with annoying-ass enemies that always seem to respawn when you go over a single damn room. Speaking of which, I really like the combat in Metroid Prime. At first, it seems a bit basic and dare I say trivial. Like an enemy comes at you and you have to shoot it. So what? The combat opens up when Samus gets more power up and you start weighing the positive negatives of each weapon. I really like the one-two punch of using the ice beam with regular missiles. Usually a power shot from the ice beam will freeze an enemy, and if Samus does enough damage to an enemy while they are frozen, they will shatter. The plasma beam does the most damage and will burn enemies. The rate of fire is pretty slow, but the damage makes up for it. Samus can also unlock an extra ability to give it a cool flamethrower effect. The wave beam is a similar upgrade, but did anyone else find the wave beam to be the worst one? I never really used it unless if I had to. Lastly, the power beam is the standard no-nonsense beam. Its strength is a bit weaker than the other options, but it can be shot extremely quickly. Samus can also shoot off super missiles by charging her shot first. On top of these, Samus has various types of visors to help her solve numerous puzzles. The scan will let Samus scan the environment as well as her enemies. A good deal of the time, scanning can really help the player if they are stuck and have no idea where to go. This can also be used on enemies and objects, which will fill out the player's logbook. These entries can be viewed at any time in the pause menu. The thermal visor will use thermography to help Samus locate enemies and objects by their heat. It can be very helpful in dark rooms as well. There are some interesting puzzles involving the thermal visor, like finding ways to power up doors. Apparently the visor is the only one that is exclusive to this game. Ouch. I guess the devs didn't like it enough to bring it back. The X-ray visor lets Samus see objects that she normally wouldn't be able to see. I remember one cool use in the Talon Overworld. If the player looks carefully, they can see raindrops stopping in mid-air. If the player scans this, the game will know that the raindrops are stopping for some reason. Turn on the X-ray visor and sure enough, there's an invisible platform there. This will happen a few times throughout the game. It can also be used to find weaknesses and structures, which can usually be destroyed with a power bomb. It can also be used to see certain enemies that wouldn't be able to see normally. All in all, it's a pretty cool visor. The bosses are pretty great in Metroid Prime. Some of them can be a bit long-winded, but they are hell-bent on making sure that you use your arsenal of tools. The Flogger is a plant-like creature that have the player wear it down until it lets down its guard. Then Samus can use the Power Bomb to damage it. The final boss will have Samus use all of her types of beams, as well as all of her visors. The bosses are all pretty distinct, fun to fight, and makes the player use their arsenal of tools. To get to the final boss, the player will need to find all 12 artifacts. These are usually pretty well hidden. Samus can get details on where to find them by scanning the pillars in the artifact temple. I thought that the most clever one was the one in the Fandrana Drifts that forces the player to destroy a tower. I I never would have thought to shoot these barrels in the distance without the temple hint. If a player is very keen to their surroundings, they could theoretically get them all without hints. They strike a nice balance between being too hard to get and not being too obscure. To move around these worlds, Samus will have to use elevators. I like how the world feels interconnected, but to get a bit negative, does anyone else find that it can be a pain to get to where you need to go sometimes? Sometimes elevators can be a bit too far apart for my liking, and this is compounded by the fact that enemies respawn rather quickly. I swear, I'll go one room over, realize that I need to turn back, just to be greeted with the same goddamn enemies. I think just a couple of fast travel rooms would have been a godsend. Another thing that bugged me is how far away some save spots are. I remember my mom asked me to help her with something. I told her that I could once I hit a save point. That never happened as an enemy killed me when I was looking for one. It's just so annoying that you can't throw down a save at any point. I mean, sure, we're playing on the Switch here, so I could have just put it into sleep mode, but I'm thinking about this from the perspective of the original game on the GameCube. I imagine this must have pissed off someone out there. The backtracking in general can be a bit tedious. At some points of the game, some of the early enemies are replaced with harder ones. It can be a pain in the ass, especially if you don't know where to go next. Sometimes I had this problem, especially if I put down the game for a few days and came back to it. I mean, just look at Metroid Prime Stuck, or Metroid Prime After. 
I'm not the only one, damn it. Look at these Google autofills. Sometimes it can be easy to miss a small detail. Like when I had to go back to Talon Overworld and miss this little hole that I can go through. I knew that I had to go here because I got the gravity suit and this place is just filled with water, but it still took me a minute. To be fair, the game will give the player a heads up if they've been wandering for a while. This is nice because it'll give the player an idea of where to go. Speaking of where to go, why the hell can't I put out map markers? Especially with this being a remaster, I really thought they would have this. Sometimes I ran into a room that I had saved for later a bit too early. The first one that comes to mind is the grapple room in Trozo Ruins. I I ran in there a couple of times because I saw that it was an incomplete room just to get there and be like, oh shit, I needed the grapple beam. That's right. Not a huge complaint, but I hope that Metroid Prime 4 has them. It took me roughly 16 hours to beat the game, and I got around 71%. If there wasn't so many games coming out that I'm interested in right now, I'd have no problem going back for 100%. On top of this, hard mode is also unlocked. I bitch about this for Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe, so it only feels fair to say it again here. Remasters, remakes, or whatever should have the harder modes from the get-go. It's a nice gesture to older players that want to start out on the harder mode right away. Not a big issue for me personally, but I'll probably get around to hard mode eventually. Another thing that I gotta commend. The lore. I like how for the most part, you don't need to scan many objects. I scanned most of the ones I ran across, but I think it will really help the replayability of this game. Next time, I can just run right through everything and not have to worry about that stuff. This time though, I took it all in. I scanned virtually everything I could and read a lot of entry logs. These can all be read from the pause menu. I really miss those days of gaming where downtime and big entries like this were just side things. This whole, it's like a movie type of games are starting to annoy me with a large amount of unskippable stuff, which can absolutely ruin pacing. Speaking of lore, the player can go through a bunch of artwork of the world and critters at the main menu. They even have cool 3D models that kind of remind me of trophies in the Super Smash Bros. series. The player will unlock more as they progress through the game. It looks like you may need to go through a 100% hard mode to unlock everything. Pretty neat, huh? I miss cool little throwaways like this in games. They are just cool things to stare at and read about for a couple of minutes. So that's Metroid Prime. I personally think that the hype may have hurt it for me just a little bit, not too much. I just didn't feel quite the same way that a lot of critics did about the game. It's fun, and as I said earlier, it sounds like it'll get even better and follow playthroughs. For my first playthrough though, the backtracking got a bit annoying. However, the curl gameplay is still great, the atmosphere is pretty much perfect, the OST slaps, and I had a great time. A strong 6 out of 7 from me, I'm calling it a pretty great game. At the very least, if Nintendo decides to release Metroid Prime 2 and 3 remastered for Switch, I'll probably buy them. If they don't, I may just play Metroid Prime Trilogy that I have on the Wii U. I gotta get ready for Metroid Prime 4, you know?